Hi everyone! So this is my shortened version of just talking a little about what I did this spring term. And uh, for this spring term I worked on FIRST Robotics competition coding and we used the Java language for that. Um, so in case you're not familiar with the FIRST Robotics competition, there's a little blurb on the screen about it, but basically it's just the robotics like league that we compete in with the Promferit Robotics team. And uh, this is my plug for you to come join our robotics team because it's a lot of fun. You can watch one of our matches up here at the QR code. And uh, this is our robot from this past season. And it was a lot of fun. So you may be wondering, Delia, if you were on the robotics team, you should have some coding experience, right? Well, not really. We actually used ChatGPT and a few other online resources to completely code our robot this past season. And it was definitely very challenging. So I decided I wanted to actually do it right, learn how to code this spring. So that's what I worked on. And there were six main things I worked on because uh, we already had a main code for our robot from this past winter. So I just worked on modifying and adding six main things. An encoded drive chain. An encoded drive chain is when you can tell the robot to go, robot, go nine feet. Versus normally it's robot move nine seconds or move eight seconds. Like you have to figure out how many seconds to get the robot to go nine feet. And that's not very consistent. So the encoded drive chain ensures that it's always going nine feet. And then we have mechanism drive. Mechanism drive, as you can see here, uses some special wheels. And the traditional drive chain method is that we have and most teams have is called arcade drive. And the way that works is if you want the robot to turn right, the robot actually has to physically turn itself. So it's like front is turning right like that. Versus with mechanism drive, you actually can keep your front facing the field and it just slides back and forth. And um, that would, there's two different kinds of mechanism drive. There's field centric and robot centric. Um, I think we are going the field centric direction right now. So that's what that is. And then limelight. Limelight is a um, camera system that you can track objects with and uh, there's different objects and game pieces on the field so it's very helpful to be able to track those and adjust positioning based on that. There's also April tags on the field which are like QR codes which Limelight can identify as long as you go through their software and identify those objects before. And then pneumatics, it's like air and you can use that to move different things like up and down on your robot. And then here we have our uh, auto balance and that uses this Novx2 gyroscope thing. And uh, so that on this like past season, there was a balancing platform and we just manually auto balanced using our driver. And uh, that was challenging, but a lot of teams actually had it. So their robot would just go on the platform and do all the work of balancing themselves. And especially when you have more than one robot on the platform, having it, your robot be able to balance itself is very helpful when everything's crazy and there's like five seconds in the match and yeah. And then six auto switches. So during the autonomous phase, which is I believe like 20 seconds long or something like that, um, the robot cannot have input from the team. So to be able to, and on top of that, the placing of where your robot goes in the fields during autonomous and during the match is all up to you and your alliance, which is two other robots and you. And before the game, you're gonna talk strategy. So there's three different positions. So as I was talking before about the auto balance and the balancing platform, if you're in the center position during the last year's competition, you had a straight line to the um, balancing station, which would get you a lot of points. But if you're on the outside, you had to maneuver your way around and you could go different ways to get different game pieces. So being able to have three different options for autonomous code is kind of crucial in the uh, robotics competition. And we found ourselves just rewriting code every single time an alliance person would change their mind on what we were our role during autonomous would be. So to prevent having to rewrite and delete code, we have implemented some auto switches. So you just switch one, two, three, and that would be the strategy you're gonna be using during autonomous. So onto the code, this is just gonna be a quick little summary of what we have here. Let's move it up so we have a few more minutes. So all of this code is connected to GitHub and I'll put the link in the description 
um, about that because uh, we're not going to be able to get through all this code in two minutes. But um, that was another thing I worked on this term, connecting it to GitHub, which has been very helpful with uh, trying to work with team or my teammates because before we were just using a Google Doc and that was very challenging. So here we have all our imports. We have our uh, timed robot class where we're initializing a lot of variables, our motors, motor controllers, joystick, PID, pneumatics, limelight, etc. Then in our robot initialization, we're uh, setting our camera to start capturing. That's another element on our robot so we can see the field. We have our mechnum drive. Um, then we're converting our encoder to feet. Uh, so resetting our encoders here. Autonomous periodic. This is during the autonomous phase where uh, this is the button thing right here, the button logic. Then we have it going 10 feet and using PID, which proportional integral derivative. You can look that up online to figure out what that is because there's not enough time in this video to go over it. Basically, we're getting it exactly to 10 feet and supposed to uh, less than that, but we're slowly, it's using calculus to slowly approach that 10 feet. And, uh, but we also don't want it to oscillate over that as well. So right to that 10 feet has to be tuned, but none of this has been tested. That's a good line to put in here. So um, we are gonna have to tune a lot of this and we don't even know if it will work. And then this is more of the button logic. Here's our uh, gyroscope. So getting the pitch in order to drive the robot forward and backwards on the balance. And we're resetting the coder again. This is during our drive sequence where we get to control the robot. So we have some code about our uh, solenoids and compressor for our pneumatics. Then this is old code, which I have not taken out. A lot of this has some, you'll see some yellow lines are from our old code of stuff that I uh, haven't taken out of the code yet from before in case we wanna go back to our old method. Then this is just old code for our arm system here, our PID to control that arm. Then we have our limelight, so it's gonna get the area and the angle and uh, one other variable in order to drive the robot using mechnum drive. And that would be if it identifies something, it's gonna be able to turn and drive forward to be able to go up to that object that you'd identified before. And then these are just, all of these are just from Time Skeleton Advanced in the FRC um, little, you have to use a template in order to communicate with the field. So these are the different classes for that. All right, so uh, I've gone a little over here. But uh, just to end, I'll leave with this quote. If it doesn't work, ChatGPT probably made it up. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed.